Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear kids. How are you today? Hope you are doing well and keeping in the best state of health and iman inshallah. I am sure you are behaving well, listening to your parents, doing good deeds and acts and saying your prayers on time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you a sadaqai jariya for your parents and teachers. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also grant us all the goodness of heart, the ability to idealize the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and the companions Rizala anho and be rightful slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah. Today inshallah I'll tell you about another great companion of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Hazrat Numan bin Mukrin. The tribe of Muzaina had their habitation some distance from Medina or the old name of Medina was Yasrib on the caravan route which linked the city to Mecca. Soon the news of the Prophet sallallahu arrival in Medina spread rapidly and soon reached Muzaina through members of the tribe who had left and returned. One evening, the chieftain of the tribe, Noman bin Mukarrin, sat among the elders and other members of the tribe and addressed them. He said to them, O oh my people, by God, we have learnt only good about Muhammad and of his mission. We have heard nothing but mercy, kindness and justice. What's wrong with us? Why do we tarry while people are hastening to him? As for myself, he continued, I have made up my mind to leave early in the morning to join him. Whoever of you wishes to go with me, let him get ready. Noman Ruzitala Anho must have been a persuasive chieftain. His words had a wondrous effect on the ears of his people. The following morning, Noman's brothers and 400 horsemen of Mozena were all ready and prepared to go with him to Yasrib to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Noman Rizidala Anho, however, felt embarrassed to go to the Prophet with such a numerous following without carrying any presents for him and the Muslims. There wasn't much he could carry anyway. That year was a year of drought and famine for the Muzaina, and much of their livestock and crops had perished. Still, Noman Rizidala Anho went around the dwellings of his fellow tribesmen and gathered up whatever sheep and goats were left. These he drove before him and made his way to Medina. There, in the presence of the Prophet wasallam, he and his fellow tribesmen announced their acceptance of Islam. The whole of Medina was agog with excitement with the coming of Numan Ruzitala Anho and the companions. Never before had there been a single family with all brothers accepting Islam at the same time together with 400 horsemen. The noble Prophet ﷺ was exceedingly glad and rejoiced greatly. Indeed, the sincerity of their effort was accepted and commended by Allah Almighty when he revealed the following words of the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And among the nomad Arabs are such as believe in God and the last day and regard all that they spend in God's cause as a means of drawing them nearer to Allah and of their being remembered in the Apostles' prayers. O oh, verily, it shall indeed be means of Allah's nearness to them, for Allah will admit them into His grace. Verily, Allah is much forgiving, most merciful. This verse is from Surah Al-Tawbah. Hazrat Uman Ta'ala Anho lived under the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam and participated in all the campaigns he was waged with valor and dedication. In the time of Hazrat Abu Bakr Ta'ala Anho, he and the people of Muzaina played a major role and commendable role in putting an end to the fitna of apostasy. During the caliphate of Hazrat Umar al Farooq Razitala Anho, Noman Razitala Anho distinguished himself in particular in the encounters with the Sasanian Empire. Shortly before the Battle of Qadasiyah, the commander of the Muslim forces, Hazrat Saad ibn Abi Waqas Razitala Anho, sent a delegation to the Sasanian Emperor. The delegation was headed by Noman ibn Muqarrin Razitala Anho, and its main purpose was to invite the Emperor to Islam. When Noman Rizitala Anho and his delegation reached the Sasanian capital, the people of the city looked upon them with curiosity and some disdain. 
They remarked on their simple appearance, their rough clothes and shoes, and their weak-looking horses. The Muslims were in no way overwhelmed and sought an audience with the emperor. The emperor granted them permission, summoned an interpreter, and said to them, Say to them, the Muslims, why have you come to our dominions? And why do you want to invade us? Perhaps you have designs on us and seek to venture against us. Numar Zitala Anho turned to his men and said, If you wish, I shall reply to him on your behalf. But if any one of you wants to speak, let him do so first. The Muslims told Numar Zitala Anho to speak. And turning to the emperor, he said, in fact, before he said anything, he started by praising and glorifying Allah and invoking peace and blessings on the Prophet ﷺ. And then he said, Indeed, God has been kind and merciful to us and has sent to us a messenger to show us the good and command us to follow it, to make us realize what is evil and forbade us from doing it. The messenger ﷺ promised us, if we were to respond to what he summoned us, Allah would bestow on us the good of this world and the good of the hereafter. Not much time has elapsed, but Allah has given us abundance in place of hardship, honor in place of humiliation, and mercy and brotherhood in place of our former enmity. The Messenger وسلم, has commanded us to summon mankind to what is best for them and to begin with those who are our neighbors. We therefore invite you to enter into our religion. It is a religion which beautifies and promotes all good and which detests and discourages all that is ugly and reprehensible. It is a religion which leads its adherents from the darkness of tyranny and unbelief to the light and justice of faith. Should you respond positively to us and come to Islam, it would be our duty to introduce the book of Allah in your midst and help you to live according to it and rule according to its laws. We would then return and leave you to your conduct and to your own affairs. Should you refuse, however, to enter the religion of Allah, you would take the jizya from you, jizya is like a tax, dear kids, and give you protection in return. If you refuse to give jizya, we shall declare war on you. On hearing this, the emperor was angry and furious at what he had heard and said in ridicule, Ha! Certainly, I do not know of a nation on earth who is more wretched than you and whose numbers are so few, who are more divided and whose condition is more evil. Then, softening his tone somewhat, he continued, but with greater sarcasm, if there is any need which has pushed you to come to us, we would enlist forces to help you make your lands fertile. We would clothe your leaders and the notables of your people and place a king from among ourselves over you who would be gentle to you. One of Hazrat Numan Zitala Anho's delegations responded sharply to this and the emperor flew into a rage once more and shouted, Worried for the fact that ambassadors are not killed, I would kill you all. Get up, you shall have nothing from me and tell your commander that I am sending an army against him to bury him and you together in the ditch of al Qadisiya. The emperor then called for a basket full of earth and ordered that it should be borne outside the city gates by the one whom the Muslims considered to be the most noble amongst them as a sign of humiliation. Hazrat Asim Razit Anho, the son of Umar, accepted the Lord and Hazrat Numan said, Accept our congratulations for the victory. The enemy has voluntarily surrendered his territory to us. Subhanallah. Dear kids, can you see how positive the companions were? No matter what, they believed that they were on the truth, so they stood up against it and nothing could put their faith down. Moving on, the Battle of Qadisiya happened. And after four days of bitter fighting, the Muslim forces emerged victorious. The victory paved the way for the Muslim advance into the plains of the Euphrates and the Tigris. The Persian capital fell and this was followed by a number of engagements as the Persians withdrew northwards. So let us end today's story over here and inshallah next time we will talk more about this hero of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us steadfast and constant in our devotions and prayers. Forgive all our sins. Make our graves a garden of paradise. Unite us with our loved ones in the highest ranks of Jannah. And grant us Jannah without any reckoning. Ameen.